Well, thanks to Channing and, and to Wider. I'm very pleased to have a chance to, to participate, participate in this meeting. And this group will try to convince you over the next hour and a half that this is really uh, an important uh, part of, of, uh, of, of the question of mapping, uh, mapping the future of, of uh, development economics. We're now two months away from a major event to remake, to relaunch, uh, to re, uh, reconstruct the, the climate regime. And I want to talk a bit about where, where that's going and what the implications are. And um, I, I, I'm sure there are people in this room who have devoted hours of their lives to this process, and there are some of you who have not. So to get everybody on the same page as to what we're talking about on the, on the, on, on the climate side, I'll, I'll, I'll give a kind of a personalized view of, of, where, of where this system is. And th this is just a picture of, the, of, of, of global CO2 emissions from 1990 to 2015. And, and we, we, we started this process in, in, uh, in, in 1992 with creating the Framework Convention on Climate Change. And then there are members of that, all, all nations essentially are signatories of that treaty, uh, that framework uh, treaty. And, and then th they have meet year after year in what's called the Conference of the Parties, the COP, as it's called, to try to, to bring this regime for control of greenhouse gas emissions and climate change into control. So the, the key, one key event was the, cre was the, the creation of the Kyoto Protocol uh, in, 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 uh, in, in 19, uh, 1997. And over the next sorts of 18 years, up to the time of the, Co of the Copenhagen meeting in, t in 2009, for 18 years, we tried to make this system work. This was a system of legally binding targets and timetables uh, where, where the obligation to, 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 to restrict emissions was only on the developing countries. The key phrase here, the key phrase of art is, is a CBDR, Common But Differentiated Responsibilities. So the developing countries took on legally binding national targets and the, deve the developed countries did. And the, and the developing countries had various obligations but not for uh, emissions reduction. And over 18 years, we tried to make that system work. And in Copenhagen, it collapsed after, after much, uh, much effort. And, and in Copenhagen, a, a small group of heads of state got together and, and essentially constructed or, or, or switched to a different architecture. Instead of legally binding national targets and timetables, we moved to a system what is loosely called pledge and review, uh, where countries are only going to do what they're going to do voluntarily and subject themselves to a, to a review process. That is the regime that, that was essentially began to be constructed then. And then in Durban, uh, there were instructions given to the negotiators to, 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 con to really construct the architecture of, of this pledge and review system. <laughs> and the <laughs> Durban platform told people, to, told, instructed, instructed the, the nations agreed that they would come to uh, 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 a, a, a formalization of all that in a meeting in Paris, which starts in November of 20, 2015. So we're just about there, and, the, and, and much effort has been given uh, to, to, do, to do this. And the, and the, key, ta the key, key task of this, in my view, of this, of this Paris Agreement is to somehow construct a system so we don't spend another 20 years trying to make this system effect, uh, effective. Now, I'm going to talk about some various aspects of that. Architecture. I will come back to three words at the at the at the end uh, that I think are important in Paris: review, cycles, and finance. But uh, we'll come back to that. Now, what what were the instructions to the negotiators? This, they were to they were to note with grave concern the two degree goal, the degree the le limiting the the the, the uh, global change to two degrees C. Um, the global change to two degrees C has been a, a goal that's been around uh, a, a long time. Uh, now, we don't say we're going to meet it, we're going to note it with grave concern, but limiting the total effect on the, on the earth is a, a key part. And then it built the, the pledges, the key word about pledges is what's called nationally determined contributions. These are the voluntary pledges. They are, uh, they are voluntary pledges or actions that countries agree to do 
They're to take effect from 2020 after negotiations in 2015. And there's to be a review, a review process. And as we go and in preparation for Paris, there's a, there's a first step where countries are going to put forth what are called indicated national contributions, or INDCs, where countries are supposed to put forth in the, in, the, in the Framework Convention website their pledges of what they're going to do. Nation, in, general, in general, the developed countries are putting together some national pledges. The developing countries are putting forth things they say they're going to do, sometimes, as I'll describe later, conditional on, on aid. The whole notion of common but dif differentiated responsibilities is no longer a negotiated matter, as it was under Kyoto, but it's something that's, uh, that underlies the, dis the, the discussion in, the, in that it's, of course, generally viewed that the developed countries have greater responsibility uh, than the developing countries. There are a lot of other themes I'm not going to talk about. It's a very complicated matter. There are issues of adaptation. Uh, there are issues of finance, technology transfer, capacity building. Right now, there is a, the, the, the negotiating document going into Paris is 90 pages at about a font eight, single spaced, filled with brackets and alternative paragraphs and such. So it's a very complicated process, uh, which they're trying to, trying to work out, which we can't go into here. So I'm going to focus mainly on the, on the <coughs> mitigation part. But important to the finance side is another, another statement that was made in Copenhagen. Uh, the developed countries made a, made a statement. I don't know if I use the word commitment, but anyway, a statement that by 2020 they would mobilize, a very good di diplomat's word, mobilize $100 billion a year to aid mitigation and uh, adaptation. So they would, that, that by 2020, they would, they, would, they, would, they would somehow find $100 billion a year for it, mitigation and adaptation. That's the instructions to the negotiators, and much is not yet agreed. So what are, what are the issues going into, in, into Paris, at least on mitigation? We don't know what the first target date is. It's supposed to, the, the, the national contributions are supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to go into effect as of 2020. When is the target date? When, when would they have a review? We don't know that, 2025, 2030. What's the nature of the review of performance? Uh, monitoring, reporting, and verification is an extremely sensitive matter because it involves national security and potential embarrassment and the like. That's still being negotiated. Uh, who does what? Clearly, you would do re re review ex post. Do you do review ex ante? These are also uh, tri tri tricky political questions. And, of course, the, the timing of the review, uh, as I'll describe later, is, is quite important. It's not clear what the nature of the future cycle of pledges would be because Paris is initiating, we're launching a new process. It's not the, it's not the, it's not the they're not gonna create the whole process, they're launching a, a system so that what that cycle is. And there's, no, and there's not agreement yet on the scope of, of the contribution. So there's much discussion and conflict over the role of markets uh, and trading, uh, offsets and joint crediting and, and such, who gets, who gets uh, credit for what. So there's still, a, a, great, a great deal uh, to, to work out, just on mitigation. And there's no agreement yet on what the legal form is. The, 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 the Durban instructions say there's supposed to be a legal agreement of some, of some kind, but it's clear, at least, at least to me and most people, that there will not be an agreement that requires ratification by parliaments and congresses, as was the true in, in Kyoto. So what, so what that will be, we don't, we don't know yet. So that's 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 the, that's the task. There is a there is a chairman's draft trying to work this work this out, and much much of this will not be resolved until Paris. There's, there are endless meetings to try to, to to try to clean up the draft and get close to what agreement would be, but that probably will be uh, uh, done in Paris. There will probably be fifteen to twenty thousand people attending that meeting uh, as, as the nations try to negotiate negotiate this. Now, what is the task? Well, I go back to my, here, I go back to my picture before. Here's the, there's, this is the, 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 the progress to date. Progress to date, you see, we had on the graph before, the Kyoto Protocol, uh, which it, it achieved some things, but, but essentially that, that architecture uh, is not going to go forward. We have this new pledge and review architecture. And uh, the, the, the task, if you wanted to meet two degrees C or, or, or some, something close to that, 
in terms of the, of the effects on, on, on global climate involve the red lines. Now, the, the dotted line is, is one of our scenarios of what would be a, 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 an, emissions tr an emissions path that would be consistent with the 50-50 chance of meeting the two degree target. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty about that. There's a lot of uncertainty about how the climate system responds to emissions, and there's a lot of uncertainty about, 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 uh, about growth of economies and, 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 and the carbon cycle and all that. So to, to slow this global, global goal, there's a, there's, a general range of, of, there's a general range of areas where the, where the emissions might be limited. But it's, it's generally, it's generally uh, agreed, I think, by, by the scientists who work in this, and certainly it's to be found in the, in the assessment reports of the Intergovernmental Plan on Climate, on climate Change, is that if we, don't, if we don't stop the growth of global emissions by about 2040 and begin to turn the system around, then it's not just that two degrees is in the rearview mirror, but a lot more than two degrees is in the rearview mirror. So the, the view that we've taken in our work on this is that we've stopped worrying about 2017, 2070 and 2090 and 2100. The question is, can we stop the growth? Can we turn the system around by, 2100, by, by 2040? And so this, the, the, this, is the, this is the task I think we need to focus on as we construct the new, uh, construct, uh, construct the new uh, regime. And the question I will address here is, are we on a path to do this? And what, it will take, what will it take to get on the path to do this? And what are the implications for the larger discussion that's taking place in this, uh, in, in, in this meeting? Now, we've done an, we do an analysis of this in our group uh, at, at MIT. And this is the way we, this is what I'm going to show you. We construct a baseline of projection of, of uh, global greenhouse gas emissions. And, and uh, the one I'm going to show you is what we think would be the expected results from what was agreed in, in, in Copenhagen. In Copenhagen, what happened is that a group, these heads of state got together and they, they constructed a kind of a loose agreement where nations would make some pledges under Copenhagen of something they would do by 2020. Some are doing it, some are not. It's quite loose. And so just, uh, they are, it's our expectation of what would take place then, take place as a result of that. And then we have the Paris Agreement, and we've done a lot of work on trying to understand to ex what people are likely to do, and we have information about the in indicated national de development uh, contributions that have been submitted, and then analyze that to 2040. And the question is, are we going to turn the corner? And we looked at various uh, expected measures that people would use by, by, by group. By group, I mean between developed, the G20, and the rest of the world work on the, 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 what would happen with regard to coal. These are the major emitting areas, coal and renewables, uh, looking at what measures people are likely to be taking in, in, in transport, on mileage standards and trucks and the like, household subsidies and regulations. These are the various measures that are being, that are gonna be used. Things on, on tropical deforestation, various things to reduce methane. And then we take account of the, of the, take account of the, of the, the indicated contributions that have already been submitted to the Framework Convention. Now, there's an error on this slide. The red dots are the countries that have already submitted their contributions. India has not. So that's a mistake. But you see the countries that have submitted their things to the, to the, to the convention. And there are, separate, there, are, there, there are countries that in these other uh, aggregate groups that have submitted, but they're not enough to be able to say that we know what the group, what the group represents. So when I show you results, I'll show you, this is the kind of a breakdown we use, the developed countries, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, European Union, Japan, United States, the rest of the G20, you see there Brazil, China, Dynamic Asia, India, Mexico, Russia, and then aggregates of the, of the rest of the world. Uh, and, and so, we, in our, our work, make distinctions between um, uh, the obligations because we, we think about the measures that would be taken in these different areas by these different groups. But we, we try to take account of the different levels of effort that you would expect from these different, uh, different uh, nations in different circumstances. And here's what we get. 
So what we expect from Copenhagen, we just say by the red line. And what we see in the in the expect what we see in our expectations, what's already being pledged in Paris, and what the what the what the expectations expectations are, we'll get the black line. We're not headed there now. I don't want this to be too negative a talk because we're achieving a lot. It's not that nothing is happening. That that in these expect in in the in the in the pledges that are being made under this current system, we're getting something, but we're not getting enough uh, to to meet uh, what we're not, to to meet this objective that we that I think is important. To, to at least stop the growth of emissions by 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 2040. So how, why what's happening here? What is in this projection? What, this is these are our expectations. Other people could do other analysis, get somewhat different results. But I think this represents the task uh, that the that the globe faces. Developed countries are of course reducing over time. The other G20 we expect to be roughly constant to 2040. China has pledged to stabilize emissions roughly about 2025 to 2030, and you see that here. India is, 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 is growing, we expect India is gonna grow substantially, and then you have this growth uh, from the rest of the world. Now, even, even to achieve this result, we need the first of my, what I think is the major achievements we have to have in Paris, which is a credible review system which is not yet achieved, achieved yet, but that's, that's the first thing I'll say, uh, that's my emphasis. What, the second thing we need is we need in, in, in Paris a, a, the, the agreement and the establishment of a system of cycles where we, where, where, we, where we don't wait too long before we think about moving to the next stage of commitment, uh, next stage of contributions and the like. We need to, to move to a system of of regular cycles over time, five-year or 10-year cycles to tighten the system. That was tried under Kyoto. It didn't work. Uh, the notion of Kyoto was that after the initial com com uh, companies made these national commitments that they would tighten the commitments and other people would join the system. It didn't work. That has to be created to work here. And so that's the second thing that we need in, 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 uh, in Paris. And then, then there's, then there's uh, to, to achieve that, uh, clearly, everybody needs to do more. So I, I don't want to, I, 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 I want to be clear that the developed countries and the other G20 and China and these others have to do more to achieve that. We can't stick with what we think we're going to get in Paris. It is the first step of a process. But we can't deal with just that. Because a lot of what's taking place to 2020 is the growth in these countries. By this projection, which is our expectation, Africa will be 20, Africa alone will be will be roughly two thirds the emissions of what is now uh, two thirds of the then developed countries, and much more than the United States or Europe individually. And of course, India will be that be that scale. And so, the the the. A major, a major pressure and a major task going forward is to deal with the emissions where the where the emissions growth is, is which is in these, which is in these uh, countries. And and the question, the question I frame, frame first question I frame here is, what does this mean for mapping of 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 of, of, of development economics? There's there's a lot, going to be a lot of pressure to deal with these, to deal with emissions in these, in these developing, in, in these developing areas, and I just point out as I've sat in this meeting, over the, 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 we over and over we talk about the need for development of infrastructure, and most of that discussion about the heavy investment in infrastructure, where is it? It's in the power system, and it's in the transport system, and if you ask me where are the major emissions growth, it's in the power system, and in the transport system. And so there's going to be there, there's going to be there's going to be pressure on the financial systems that that are that are that are uh, that, that are going to be used to achieve these uh, these these growth objectives. And and um, there are two worlds going forward. There's the, there's there's the there's the the uh, sustainable the sustainable uh, growth objectives. They have this meeting coming up on on, on the new sustainable goals. And I'm, I'm, it's even sometimes the same diplomats. You have that system on, on sustainable development, and you have this system on a lo lowering emissions. And what the relationship is between, between those two 
in the financial, in the financial, in overseas development assistance and, and international aid and foreign direct investment and the like, how that's going to work, I don't think we know. But it's very important in thinking about what the, what the map is that we're dealing with. Most of these, most of this is in, uh, most of these, a lot of these countries in this group have, are beginning to make commitments, but, but, but this comes to my main, my third main point. They're making commitments that are conditional commitments. And this is, again, has to do with, with, with the notion of, of uh, common but differentiated responsibility. So Algeria says, yes, we will commit conditional on external assistance. And Colombia says, yes, but conditional on the provision of favorable and predictable, predictable support. And Ethiopia says, yes, conditional upon international support that, that enables investments. And Kenya, these are all submissions to the United Nations. Uh, this is subject to international support in the form of, of finance. And I, we don't have the commitment, we don't have the statement from India into the framework convention, but, but, the, but India's, India's uh, 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 statements by the, by the government officials in advance of that all make this point, that we, 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 can, we can help, but, but we have to have the financial assistance to do that. And one of, the, one of the issues that is, is going to come up is the $100 billion that we talked about, $100 billion a year by 2020. Well, it's extremely difficult, maybe impossible, and too little. So that, that problem is once again kind of coming to the squeeze on, the, on, the, on, 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 on finance, uh, which is going to, which, which has to be thought, which, which we need to think through. What, what are the implications of that in terms of the other financial issues that we talk about in this meeting for driving development and generally in 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 these in these countries? <laughs> and and I'll, and and so the the keys to a successful launch, in my view, are a credible and timely review process, which is going to be hard to do. Durable cycles of, of, of increased effort, which is a follow-on process that needs to be established. And, and we need, we need the, the structure, at least, to support uh, finance for these, for these conditional uh, pledges. If we don't do that, if we can't achieve these, then, then I think that, 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 we, that we, will blow past, uh, we will blow past 2040 with, uh, with, growing, uh, with growing, emissions, uh, growing emissions. Now... Uh, one final one final thought. I, everything I've said has to do with, with with the implications for development finance and for development strategy and for development economics of the effort to control greenhouse gas emissions and the pressure that's going to come out of the developed countries on the developing countries to do something about it. Uh, I just want to point out that based on our expectations, we're going to see quite a bit of climate change. We aren't going to limit to two degrees C. And another aspect which I think needs to, ought to be on the, on, on the table, in, 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 I know it's part, a lot of writers doing a lot of work on this, but it didn't show up so much in this meeting, is, is more attention to uh, vulnerable, more attention to uh, uh, vulnerability, to, 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 to resilience, to, to uh, adaptation. Because these things are coming, and on the horizon of this meeting, there's much talk, much talk in the meeting at 2020, 2030, 2040 in terms of development strategies. These development strategies need to, to begin to take more account of what are, what, are the, what, are the, what are the external conditions in the environment as it may influence coastal cities, agriculture, uh, uh, and, 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 and the like. So um, I've learned a lot in this meeting since I'm a climate person and not a development person, but I go away with several puzzles of how do these, how are these systems of development finance and control of the climate going to get, get integrated in a way that's not mutually destructive? Because we are mapping the road, but I say that down the road, there's a dark forest down the road that I don't think is getting sufficient attention. Thank you.